Okay, so we are now at 10 o'clock, and one of the things I'm always wanting to do is start on time. So I'm going to get this ball rolling, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen just for a moment so that you, when you have this, like some of the parents want to share this with the teachers. And so what I want to do is make this to where you can, uh, they can see what we're talking about. So today, we are having a very special day because, and as I'm going to share with you here, you all finished the STEAM Race to Space Reading Challenge. And I want to say congratulations to you. Almost 2,000 students joined this reading challenge. So we are really thrilled that you selected and won this Zoom meeting with the two astronauts. Now we did this in three different categories so that all the young kids can be at one time and they're now, and then the little bit older kids are gonna be at 11, and then the middle grade, the preteens are gonna be at noon. So you are, you are very, very, very smart and very lucky to be on this call. Yes. And it's our wish that you enjoy this conversation and that you'll be ready to ask some questions. So with that, um, I want to ask a question. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I have a couple of questions. I would like you to all raise your hand if you've ever had a conversation with an astronaut. I know I have. <gasps> you have, Rosa? <laughs> oh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so it looks like most of you have not had that chance. So the final question is, I'd like you to raise your hand if you think you'd like to be an astronaut. Okay, oh, now I see more hands. All right, well, with that information, then I'm very excited to share with you the two astronauts that you are gonna be meeting today. And you're gonna be having a conversation. I want you to meet Wendy Lawrence. And before she became an astronaut, Wendy Lawrence flew helicopters in the US Navy, landing on so many different types of Navy ships over 800 times. As a NASA astronaut, she flew on board the space shuttle four times. Her next two flights went to the Russian Space Center, Mir. Her last flight on board Discovery went to the International Space Station. Can everyone say hi, Miss Lawrence? Uh, hi, Miss Lawrence. Hi, Miss Lawrence. Hello, hi. everyone. Hi, nice to Miss see you. Lawrence. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Wonderful. Now, the next astronaut you're going to meet is Katie Coleman. And she's not only an astronaut, she's also a scientist, a pilot, and a musician. And we'll hear about that, I'm sure. At NASA, she spent more than 180 days in space, including two space shuttle missions and a six month expedition living and working on the International Space Station, which we just call it ISS. While on the ISS, she was in charge of science experiments and robotics, and she performed the very first Space Earth duet on her flute with a wonderful musician, Ian Anderson, who plays with Jethro Tull. And if you ever want to watch that, you can find it on YouTube. So everyone, let's say hi to Miss Coleman. Hi, Miss Coleman. Hi, Miss Coleman. Coleman. Hello. Hi, Miss Coleman. Hi, Miss Coleman. Coleman. Well, so wonderful to have you both here. So let's turn it over to you both. Um, hey, are you going to go first? Um, okay, I don't know how. What, who, who's going to go first? Go. I'm trying to make my computer go in the right place. So we'll have Wendy go first, if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I have just a few slides that I'm going to show Pat. So let me try and uh, do that.
Looking good so far. All right. So how many of you all live in Southern California? You would you you live in Southern California? Raise your hand. Oh, so actually when I was your age, I too was living in Southern California. We <laughs> lived, my dad was in the Navy and he was flying out of a naval air station called Miramar at that time, near San Diego. So I grew up just north of San Diego. And many years ago, when I was 10 years old, NASA did something that was absolutely amazing. They sent people to land on the moon for the first time. And I remember lying on the floor in our family room in front of the television. And to this day, I cannot tell you what it was about watching Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walk on the moon for the first time. But I looked at that and I could not take my eyes off the screen. And I thought, that's what I want to do when I grow up. I want to be an astronaut and I want to have the opportunity to fly in space. So growing up in a family where people served in the military, my mom's dad was a Navy pilot. My dad was a Navy pilot. I decided that I wanted to be a Navy pilot as well, but unlike them, I decided that it would be more fun to fly helicopters because it really is amazing to be able to fly sideways and backwards in your helicopter. And in any given day, I might be a FedEx driver delivering parts and packages, or I might be like a Pizza Hut driver delivering mm -hmm. food or Uber drive, and taking people around to the various ships. But I really like the fact that I was always part of a team because typically there were four of us on board the helicopter. So that was always fun to be able to fly with other people. But what I really wanted to do was ride on a rocket ship. So wow. eventually, as you heard, I put in my application and I got selected by NASA. This is a fun picture of my very first space shuttle orbiter endeavor, which is now at the California Science Museum. So you can go see my rocket ship. And I did that four times. Picture of Discovery, the orbiter for my last two space shuttle flights. And it was awesome to finally have my childhood dream to come true and to be up in space working. Wow. On our first flight, we did astronomy. So here are the telescopes that we took with us into space. And it was my job to make sure the spaceship was pointed in the right direction. So you can see me sitting in the pilot seat doing that. And then my next flight, uh, next two flights went to the Russian space station and the last flight to the International Space Station, uh, same spacecraft that Katie lived on. I only got to visit the ISS, but it was very, very fun to be on board space stations and doing your mission with other people. So I love to be an astronaut. It's a very busy job. There's a lot to learn. You're always a student, just like you all are going to school, learning new things. That's what you have to do to be an astronaut. But it was very, very fun to work hard and make that dream come true and then have an opportunity to be up in space doing your mission and being able to look back, as you can see, at our really beautiful planet. All right, so I will now stop sharing, I think, and I will turn it over to Katie. Hello. Hey, Katie, do you think we should see if the kids have any questions? Oh, yeah, we can know? see. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So if you have a question, good. We've got the Gibson family. Oh, look at that. I see All little right. Owen. Owen has, a, has his hand up. Okay, so... Go ahead and ask your questions to Miss Lawrence. What happen, What happens if you sneeze in space? Oh, if we sneeze in space, you know, hold on a minute. We might be able to demonstrate. Oh, cool, Wendy. That possibly with a fun video, because I think you need to understand what it's like to be up in space. So hold on a minute. And while Wendy's getting that, our, oh, and I think maybe you're asking, like, if you sneeze, then it's going to go, ah, choo, and you're going to go, ah, which if you think about it, that's what our rockets are doing. They're going, ah, and they're pushing, they're pushing out air, and that pushes us forward, right? And so Wendy is going to show us some stuff about 
Does a sneeze actually make us go anywhere? Well, actually, so when we orbit the planet, can you see this blob of water? We yeah. float. We don't feel gravity anymore. So as Katie just described, if I'm just floating in the middle of my spaceship and I sneeze, my sneeze goes forward and it has enough force to push me backwards. When you get into high school and college, you're gonna study some physics and you're gonna understand why this happens. There's something called, for, you know, we basically, a really smart guy by the name of Isaac Newton figured this out. And he said, for every action, there's an opposite reaction. So you sneeze, your sneeze goes out and you go backwards. But again, we don't feel gravity. So if we want to float in the middle of our crew compartment, we can do that. And that's really fun to be in that environment. And when Raza, I look at it, Raza has a question and then Hero. Raza? I, I want to know how to become an astronaut. Well, you know what? Why don't we let Katie talk about how she became an astronaut? Because Katie and I did two very different things. And this would be a good way, I think, of answering the question. Do you, you want to do that, Katie? Sure. Oh, but I have a special visitor. <gasps> okay. This is very, very fun for you all. We have this. This is Max. Hey, Max. This is our new kitty. And Max often likes to sleep on my desk after lunch. And my son, Jamie, just brought him up to, and he'll look around and maybe I'll look, give, I'll show you another picture when he falls asleep. He likes to sit right in front of me when I do my homework or when I'm learning things on the computer. He likes to hang out with me. Cause so Max called. is a learning kitty. No Morgan, we'll come back to you in a minute, honey. And Hero, you too. We'll come back to you. Don't worry. So we're, we are definitely, you can put your hands down. We're, we are definitely going to answer everybody's questions and because um, and, we have lots of time to do that. And I, can I go ahead and just show my couple slides, Pat? Is that sure. Okay? Yeah, so, go right ahead. Um, my story of becoming an astronaut, I, I'm somebody that likes to do things together. And I, I often kind of wonder, well, if I'm going to do this, I wonder if other people are doing it too. And I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen here. We'll see if that works. And let's see, like this, and I'm going to do this and this just so we can. And I'm going to do, so, um, you know, I'm an astronaut. And part of the way you know that is, well, first of all, because Miss Burns told you and we believe her because she's a teacher and teachers really know so many things. And also because you've read books and you know that astronauts can look like Wendy and I, Miss Lawrence and, and myself. But when I was your age and I grew up, I, I saw a lot of pictures of astronauts and they look like this picture here where I looked and I, I would say, well, he looks pretty interesting. And I wonder what his spacesuit is for. And I wonder why his vest is yellow. But everybody in the picture was a man and I was a girl. And, I, and so I never really thought, I thought it must be interesting to be astronauts, but I never really thought that I myself could be an explorer until I grew up and I in uh, and when I was in college and I was studying uh, a lot um, you sometimes have to take a break to learn things and learning things can be just stepping outside and noticing nature or asking a neighbor you know what do they do when they go to work or your, your parents what was work like to, today those can be ways to learn things well and I went to a lecture by Dr. Sally Ride who was the first American woman astronaut and I just thought Wow, I didn't know that girls could be astronauts. And I wanted to show you a picture of um, the, uh, these are some of the newer astronauts. And so now when we take a picture of a group of astronauts, I really like this picture because you see all sorts of different, you know, different people, different people that I have things in common with. Um, and, and I had things in common with the Mercury 7 as well. We all liked to learn things and we all knew that math and science and reading were really important. So we had that in common. But I like, I like it that now when we pick astronauts, there's really a lot of different kinds of astronauts and certainly there's uh, girl astronauts or women astronauts as well. And in fact, this picture right here is the brand new astronauts that just like two weeks, no, three weeks ago, at the very beginning of December, they each got a phone call saying, you have been studying hard 
and you and you filled out an application and you told us who you were on this application and we think you would be great astronauts and so this is the brand new astronauts and they are five women and five men some are scientists some are engineers some are pilots some are doctors anybody else in there wendy that i'm leaving out uh let's see you said scientists and engineers and doctors some are pilots in the military one actually works up in alaska in the oil field she's what they call a drilling engineer which i think is a really interesting background oh that is very cool but you know we all as katie said we all had to learn so the best way that you know become an astronaut is to stay in school keep working hard listening to your teachers doing your homework learning new things Mm -hmm. And we all had to go to college. That's something that NASA requires. So after you finish high school, you have to go to college. And Katie said the most important thing, like any job, you actually have to apply. Mm -hmm. So you have to let NASA know that you are interested in becoming an astronaut. And, and that, that, you know, you can practice that. Like when you're a teacher, you're, you're in class, and even if you're on Zoom, you, your teacher might say, is anybody curious about really cool Cat, looking cats cats in space <laughs> cats in space i'll get i'll get my bag in just a second to show them when they, um but uh and and then you and you might think well i i think i am but I, i'm not sure well you know what put that hand up and try like just go i'm gonna try this and that's actually how i got to do a lot of things is i wouldn't be so sure like someone said to me they, my teacher said does anybody in the class want to learn how to play an instrument and i thought well i'm not sure but i i kind of like to learn how to play the flute and so i had to be brave but i put up my hand and i said i want to learn how to play the flute and now i'm a flute player and i know how to play the flute I was going to show a few more slides here, Wendy, just to so a few more things and then we do some more questions. Yeah, and yeah. so I just wanted to show you, you know, so from being someone who never thought they could be an astronaut, there I am on the space station. I have the same hair that I have right now, but gravity down here on Earth is making my hair be flat, right? But up in space, you can see that my hair is like a lion up there. And everybody who has kind of long hair, their their hair would be like it was a lion up there. <laughs> and this is me doing an experiment. I'm doing a science experiment and learning like when, when Miss Wendy showed you those pictures of the water drops and they had Mr. Reed's picture in there because he was in, in back doing all sorts of cool things. I'm We're actually doing science experiments because we'd like to find out what do liquids want to do? I mean, what down here on the earth, liquids, like if you spill your drink, now don't do this at home, but if you spill your drink, we've all done that, then we know what's going to happen. It's going to be in a puddle on the ground or on a countertop or on your best shirt or your best friend's shirt. And so um, up in space, if you try to pour something out, it's not just going to pour. It's going to be it's going to be like a sphere, just like Miss Wendy showed you. And I, so I flew twice on the space shuttle and every mission has a different kind of purpose. And the purpose of my mission was to practice, and that's a word you'll hear from Wendy and I a lot, was to practice doing experiments up in space on a space station. And we don't wanna just like build the space station and go up there and do things for the very first time. What if they don't work? We should, we should figure them out on a space shuttle mission when we go up for just a week or two so that was what i did i went up on this experiment mission this is a pretty cool shot that shows you actually all the power coming out of our solid rocket boosters wow. and out of the external tank and then up at the top with the shock wave going going over us that is i'm i am in that space shuttle it was a very cool place to be and you know not scary actually just so interesting to be up there and then on my last trip to space, um, I got to go up to the space station and this is the, and live there. And you see in this picture, you can see the space shuttle hanging on the end. That's how when Wendy went up, Miss Lawrence went up to the space station, she went up there on the space shuttle and they attach. And then they brought some pieces of the space station in the back of the payload bay here, in the back of the shuttle. And then the robotic arm would reach in and pull some out and make up the space station. And so, uh, and so it's really cool to think about how a space station really gets built. And I thought I might show my minute and a half video. Should we do that, Miss Pat? Yes, absolutely. 
Um, I wanted to show you, you know, and Wendy, um, this is, this is my, my, I went right after my birthday when I turned 50 years old, I got to go to space and live on the space station. And this is my team. And in the middle is Dimitri from Russia. He's a cosmonaut. And Paolo on the right, he's from Italy. We're a team, we're a crew. We always do things together. And this is a, it's kind of a made up picture, but it shows you how big the space station is. Like it's not small and tiny. Now the ships that we go up in, the cabins, they are kind of small and tiny. And that might be like a really good place for, for Max here to go on uh, he would like to go he could go in something small and he could stay there because he's very small but i'm big so i want to be in in the space station and if you look along the 50 yard line like up and down here in these modules here they are each one of them is the size of a school bus without the seats in there so we have about 10 of them it's like 10 school buses and they're in a line but some of them are up and some of them are down and sideways and so we have a lot of room to run around but first we have to get there in our tiny little capsule and i'll show you just a tiny little movie about that and this is us we're in our russian spacesuits because we're going in our russian spaceship and we make sure everything is safe as safe as it can be and then we are inside here inside the capsule there's sort of like a big big tin can around us protecting us but there we are and i'm waving to my mom waving to my son who's on the ground and here we are coming in in our capsule docking with the space station and then there we are in space not just floating around but flying around everywhere doing experiments doing the things that we practiced and what we're also this is our kitchen table we're eating and we're we're doing some things that we think are fun and i brought some of my flutes up to space i brought some other people's flutes up there too and you can see what a very cool space station it is. And this is what it looks like to look out the window. Do you see the earth? Yeah. Now we get to look down and guess who we see? We see everyone. We see everyone that's living on earth, every single person. We can't really see them exactly because you can see we're a little bit far away. When they have the lights on, we know. When they have the lights off, we know. We can see because we're about Oh, 250 miles above the earth and that little green line there that is the atmosphere and in the end i always show a picture of what is home for me and home for me is from my family was ireland and there's that space station with the modules that we are flying around in right here and then our solar arrays that give us power so i think we still very have good. questions oh we do i know hero has been very patient Hero, what is your question? You have to unmute. You have to unmute. How, how do you drink water in Minecraft and how well if you jump? I mean, I mean in space. How do you drink water? Oh, how do we drink water? And how do you jump uh, in space? Jumping, well, Wendy's getting her, her, her drink bag there. Jumping is a little harder because Think about it. When you get when you jump up down here on the ground, okay, we jump up. With the reason we end up, we come down. Like you jump up and then you immediately come down. Even if you jump really high like a basketball player, you still come down. That's because gravity is pulling us towards the center of the earth. And up in space, we have so little gravity because we're far away from the earth that when we jump, we just keep going. And well, we'd better have our helmet on, huh? Wait, because otherwise, well, we're going to bang our head. <laughs> so right, how do Lauren? we drink? And so why we... do you drink water? Well, he, she's well, going to show you now, Hero. So we showed you what happens if water just can go out on its own if we don't have it in, in a we can't really use a glass in space think about what makes water when you pick up a glass and you tip it what's helping water get to your mouth it's the pull of gravity so we showed you everything floats so i guess if i wanted to i could take my special straw this is my special straw and i could put it in that bottle of water and go and suck it up but we put everything basically Black in a drink pouch. Yeah, I like <clears throat> I like coffee. You would probably have water, or you might have lemonade, or you might have. I don't know if people like pineapple drink. I do like pineapple drink too. Me but too. you could have a bag of 
a juice if you wanted. And there's powder we, in the bottom, right? To make like pineapple drink, or you yep, can have- So everything we drink oh, is a, like a powdered beverage. So if you've seen Kool-Aid, you'd have to add water and mix it up. We have to add water. So we have a very special end where we can slide a needle in and then it puts water in our drink bag. And then I add my straw to it and then I can drink. So everything Excellent. I drink is gonna be in a pouch. Excellent. Kind of like your juice box. So we wanna go to Morgan. I know Morgan was waiting. Morgan, you have a question? Was your main goal to be an astronaut or you figure it out along the way? Well, for me, yeah, I had wanted to be an astronaut for a really long time. So I was a little bit older than you are now, Morgan. So that was the dream I had when I was a kid. So it took me 25 years to make that dream come true. But Katie, I think, has a different answer than I do. Morgan, I, I really like science. And I, I like, I specifically, I like chemistry which is kind of like cooking. I actually really like to cook too, where you pour some things together and you make something that you didn't have before. And you can do that with cooking, but I like to do it with um, different chemicals that you put together and they make all these materials that we need in order to be safe. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, and they're just really unusual because um, I don't know if any of you, do any of you like to go on scooters or skateboards? Is that those those are fun? Well, think if they were just so heavy that every time you wanted to pick them up, they were so heavy and maybe skiing. If any of you ski, even in California, I know you could go skiing. Um, we, we can make materials that are lighter. We can make airplanes that are faster by making materials that are really, really light. And so the way we make those things is, is by being curious. Hmm, I wonder how we can do that. So I like to find out how things work. And I'm not the kind of person who is like, oh, if we designed the race car to look like this, I think about what the race car maybe should be made out of. And if somebody is going to do surgery in a hospital, what, and they're gonna give you maybe an artificial hip, what should your hip be made out of? Should it be made out of like lead where it's like so heavy or really something really light and strong? So I liked, I was very curious about materials. And then I realized that I would like to do experiments in space. And so Great I started, question applying to NASA and asking them how I could become an astronaut. And sure enough, being curious was one of the best things. Thank you. Uh, Sebastian, you have your, you. raise your hand, Sebastian. Do you want to unmute? You can speak now. Hi. Um, um, how does it feel to go over in the rocket? Uh, how does it go? How does it feel to go up in a rocket? How does it feel to go up in a rocket? Very powerful. Sebastian, do you have, I can see you have a sister, yes? Do you have an older brother or older sister? Younger sister. Younger sister. You have a younger So I have an older brother and he's six years older than I am. And when we were about your age, we used to wrestle all the time. And of course you would imagine that me being younger, I never won. My brother always won the wrestling match. And to celebrate his victory, he used to sit on my chest. Have you ever had anybody sit on your chest? You know, that's really heavy and it makes it hard to breathe. So the rocket we ride is very powerful. It has to be very, very powerful in order to work against gravity and get us high enough up above Earth's surface that we can all go around the planet and stay there going around the planet. So I remember on my first rocket ride, all the engines lit off and we could, I feel the moment we leave the launch pad and the rocket's shaking a little bit and we start going faster and faster and it starts to feel heavier and heavier on my chest. And I remember thinking to myself, Oh, this is just like when I was a kid and I would wrestle with my brother and he would sit on my chest. It's so heavy. I felt like I couldn't take a breath. And then I tried to put my arm out in front of me 
And I, I couldn't hold my arm there because the rocket's so powerful. It actually is a really, really fun to ride the rocket. When you get older, you might go to uh, um, Six Flags over California and, or Disneyland and do the incredible coasters and ride the roller coaster and feel the power of that. The rocket is much, much better, more fun than going to the Matterhorn ride. But it's very, very powerful to ride the rocket. And, and oh, by the way, during my first mission, I did get to talk to my brother. And I got to share that story with him during my mission that um, flying on the rocket was just like wrestling with him as a kid. And my brother said, well, I'm so glad that he could facilitate my spaceflight training at such an early age. That was his answer to me. Wow. wow. OK, so uh, the other Sebastian, you have your electronic hand raised. What is your question? You have you have to unmute. Okay. Hi, good morning. Morning. Good morning. What is your you don't be don't be shy. Okay, he wants to ask how does your body feel when I mean if your body feels different here on earth that, that in space? How do you breathe? And what else? And if you're afraid. Good question. Like, what's the difference in your body? And were you afraid? Well, one of the things I noticed um, that was so different up there was sleeping. Where, I don't know, I mean, all of us, you know, we have to go to bed and we have to rest. And down here on Earth, I kind of like to sleep kind of all curled up in a ball on my side. And so, and then I, and I put a pillow under my head. And then up in space, if you think of, and so I, hear, I feel my pillow on the, I feel my head on the pillow, and I feel my shoulder or my back on the bed. And I just, and I, and sometimes, you know, when you're so tired, like you've played really hard all day, and then you lay down on your bed to maybe to take a nap, you just go, oh, my bed is so good. Well, up in space, without gravity, we don't really get to be on our beds. And so, because we're always floating around. And if we want to go somewhere, we don't just float. We actually give ourselves like a little push, just with like a finger. And then we can go all the way across the space station if we want to. And in fact, it takes so little force to move. If I took like one little hair from my head, like one hair, and I stretched it out between my fingers, and then I actually, and let's say you were up in space with me, Sebastian, and I pushed off on your nose like this. I pushed off my, like this, I would actually go all the way across the space station. So even with just one little hair, that's strong enough to push you across the sta space station. And sleeping, some people, now I, I got used to it pretty quickly, but some people really miss having a pillow that is on their head. And so they actually take a little pillow and they strap it to their head so that they feel a pillow on their head. That's interesting. Now we only have a few more minutes. So I want to make sure if there's someone that didn't get to ask a question, that they get to have a question asked. And um, Mr. Chin, Mathis, Chin, you have your hand raised. And we haven't asked, you haven't asked a question. So please, what is your question? Might need some help from your parent. That's okay. Yeah, how do you do the rocket ship? Dad, you can help him. That's fine. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Matthias wanted to ask, have you ever seen a UFO in space? Good question. Wendy, I don't know if you have. I, I actually have. I'll let Katie answer. I have to say no. Um, we did have a mosquito float up out, a dead mosquito float up out of the payload bay mm -hmm. on my last flight. Florida mosquito, but no, I've not seen anything that I would classify as unusual, but I will let Katie answer. Well, on my first mission, we looked out and we saw something kind of sparkly in the distance and we thought, hmm, wonder what that is. Not as just could tell, it's just closer than a star. And then we looked back and a little while later and it was still there and it was still there. So, you know, we're scientists and engineers. We like to ask questions, so we called Mission Control because we started to wonder, like, so we're seeing something kind of interesting. Maybe it's like 
a UFO? And they said, oh, no, that is actually a piece of a rocket. Just like, do you remember when I told you about our rocket and how when, when I was in the little tiny Soyuz spacecraft, we had like almost like a tin can around our little tiny rocket on the way up? Like you see the rocket is big and tall like this. Inside are a lot of the things that need to be protected, like our capsule is inside. So we had a little sort of almost like a tin can around it. And then when we get up to space, we don't need that anymore. And we kick it off. And we kick it off in, in such a way that it ends up, it's like tumbling and tumbling. And that means it's actually eventually going to enter, re-enter the atmosphere in a way so that's because it's moving and moving and moving it's going to re-enter kind of steep and it's going to burn up before it gets back to earth and so what we were seeing was a piece of a rocket that was on its way to burn up on the way back into back to earth and that's really important to make sure that you design your rockets so that all the pieces you know burn and they become dust we never even see them back there on the earth so that the other pieces are not flying around in space because everyone would run into them Thanks, Thank Matthias. you. Good question. Now I'm going to I'm going to ask Remy and then the Gibson family. I know you all have a question, but we're going to try to finish it up. And then Raza, that will be the last question. OK, so we'll start with Remy. Where are you? There we go. Unmute. Still trying to unmute. Here, let me see if I can help you. Pass to unmute. Uh, Remy, why don't you figure it out in the meantime, Raza, will you unmute? Yeah. What's your question? I, 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 I really don't have a question. I have a couple of comments. Okay. I see that space, um, Ship that um um that you went in, the oh, only yeah. thing I've seen at the International Space Station at the California Science Center. At the ah, California. Yes. Yay! Yes, you saw. Yay! I'm glad you saw my spaceship and endeavor. Sebastian, Sebastian, the one in the costume. Mm -hmm. He's at my school. He's in my oh. grade. Class well, one. that's fun. How hey, fun for you to awesome. see him. And he was in my soccer last year. Somebody asked a question in the chat. Why don't you read the question? Okay, someone asked a question in the chat. How long does it take to get to the space station? Well, if we went straight there and we didn't like try to park really no, carefully, like park really we launched just on time to we catch it. It would only take would about ten minutes to get to the space station. Two? Ten. But it turns out I mean, that because when we get to space, when the rocket, when the engines are firing, 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 we're getting up to space and we're getting to go fast enough so we know we can stay in space and go around the Earth, that actually only takes about eight and a half minutes to get to space. Not days, not weeks, eight and a half minutes. But when we're going to go to the space station, of course, it's very important to approach slowly and to, to be very careful about how we come in for parking. And so then that actually takes a few hours to do. And sometimes it takes a little longer because we have to kind of catch up with the space station. Hmm. But Great these question. days, the rockets can get there. If a crew launches, they can get there in about six hours. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wow. I didn't know that. But in terms All of right. when you start floating around, that's, that happens at about eight and a half minutes. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Part. <laughs> All right, the Gibsons, what is your question? Can you unmute, please? What? Oh. My, I have two questions. My first, my first question is, how big is the sun? Really, 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 really big. I don't even know that we could, I think it depends on how you describe what part is the sun because the sun has a lot of gases, gases that move away from it. So and fire explosions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we, it get, I call it burping. Sometimes the sun burps and it sends some of those gases and, and bits and pieces of the sun out into space. So 
much, much bigger than planet Earth. It's hard to put it in, a, in terms of, of, with words that um, we would actually be able to understand just how big it is. I don't think there's anything that we could compare it to on Earth so we could understand how big it is. Okay, my second question is how fast is the moon? How fast is the moon? Do you mean how fast is the moon going around the earth? Yeah. Mm. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> we don't, I mean, we don't I, have all the answers. I don't know. I have an astronomy book in my bookshelf behind me. Well, in the meantime, what is your sister's question? Oh, they did your question? Somebody to show you. No, no, no. Ask your question. I mean, Ask your question. I. What is it like in space? What? So, um. Yeah, my What does it feel like in space? What does it feel like in space? Well, I think it feels like so delightful and wonderful because it's really interesting because it takes so little force to move around. I felt like I was Peter Pan or Tinkerbell where they get to fly everywhere and you can't even you really can't walk. You know, it's I mean, you can you can kind of grab things with your hands, but we don't. We just give ourselves a little push and whoo, and it's just so it's really I think it feels like magic. And that's why I really liked living there very much. Did Remy ever get to, to ask? Maybe Remy could type his ch question in the chat. Yeah, Remy, oh, yeah. you want to unmute? Yeah, one Ask for questions. Don't Well, oh, he's got to go back. <laughs> get... Oh, there we go, okay. Remy. There we go. What's your question, hey. Remy? My question is, uh, what happens if the walking ship crashes? Ah, well, we have a lot of things that's that's a good question remy and we we ask that question at nasa a lot we say well what happens if on our way to space and we have three engines what happens if we lose one of those engines then that's the reason we have three is because we always know that we can then have extras and so we think about what could happen and can we be ready for that and so it depends what you mean by crashing, but we make sure that our landing gear for the space shuttle, we make sure our landing gear is really, really strong. And for our cap, for our capsules that are landing, and that's actually what you see a lot these days with SpaceX and the Russians and Blue Origin, they, they have capsules that are going up to space. And here's, here's my capsule, okay? Um, let's see if we'll be here. It's going up to space. And what happens is on the bottom of these, as it's coming down, they have parachutes that come out in the parachute. So this, it's racing towards the earth to come when it comes back down, like falling, falling, falling. And the parachutes come out and make it go slower, slower, slower. But then right before we land on the very bottom, we have jets that go. They, they sense that the ground is coming closer, closer, closer. And when it gets really close, that's when the um, engines on the bottom of the rocket fire. Psst, and they slow us down and we land really gently. So we hope we don't really have a crash, but we try to be really ready for that by making our systems as safe as they can. And even our seats in the spacecraft are actually, we're laying down in them. And so when we land, we're landing like this. And that way we actually have something to support our whole body as we land. So we hope we're really ready for a crash. And we hope that we just have to wait for the people to come and help us get out. But we also practice getting out ourselves. And I know that all of you in a car are wearing seat belts. Well, astronauts wear seat belts too. It's the most important thing for a crash. And you don't know when there's gonna be a crash. So you always have to wear your seat belt. And so it's really good to be very practiced at putting your seat belt on. But like Katie said, we always try, when we design a rocket ship, we always try and make sure we have more than one way to do something. Same with the space station. We have more than one way to make water. We have more than one way to make oxygen and air for the crew to breathe. And that's how we design our rockets. So if one piece of equipment is not working that day, we have another piece of equipment that's installed that can do that very same job. And you drive in a car that has a seatbelt and an airbag, so you have a couple ways to be protected in case you might bump into something and have a little bit of a crash. 
So it's the same concept with our rocket ship. We always try and make sure we have more than one way to do something. All right. Thank you. We've had Sahas and Prahas. Am I saying your names correctly? You, mm -hmm. You've been so patient. Thank you. What are your questions? My question is, once the rocket ship gets to the International Space Station, how do you get onto the International Space Station? We um, so our rocket hook ship, you know, hooks up. We, we sort of dock in the in 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 places that where they have a similar size, and we have hooks that draw us in, and we make a really good seal. And then, but there's we have a door on our side, and they have a door on their side. It's kind of like in a house where you have a little. You walk into the house, and there's maybe a little room where you take off your shoes. And everything and make sure that all the mud stays outside it's like our little hallway and so we make sure everything is safe and then we open our door to the outside and they open their door into the space station but we do that by having sort of this little hallway that gets made when the two ships come together so that's how we get onto the space station now we your brother it, had a question docking. thank you miss coleman your brother had a question yeah what is it how many Jupiters fit inside the sun? <laughs> that is what the Google is for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, you could look that up. I think you could use the internet to help you answer that. I, I do have my astronomy book out. I could not find exactly how fast the moon travels. Uh, mm -hmm. I can look and see if I can find out anything about Jupiter and how big it is versus the sun. But that's, some, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. That shows your curiosity, and that's something your parents probably can help you answer. Do you have any other questions? Okay, well, thank you. Okay, Sebastian, I see that you're raising your hand again, and then here we go. Okay, it's Oh, you're muted. Sebastian is muted. Go ahead, one more time. Oh, muted again. I play piano. You play instruments. Do we play what is instruments? Instruments. We do. I play the flute, and we have a piano up there, a keyboard that's electronic. Um, we have a guitar. People have brought saxophones, a trumpet, bagpipes, and a um, oh, what's the Australian didgeridoo? Didgeridoo. Yes. So lots and, and any instrument you can bring it up there. That's if you great. can if you can find room. If you can find room, yes. Wow. It can't be too big. All right, hero. And then we should close it up. What what if you what if something falls out and, and you have of the spaceship and then you and then you have to get it but you un accidentally unattach from the wall. Well, and Wendy can jump in here too, because Wendy and I have both practiced spacewalking. Um, when we're up in space, pretty much everything that we bring out, we have a tether or a leash, almost like a dog leash on it. And for us, almost always we have like even but two. What if you fall off? Well, two things. One is that um, we make sure that we don't just for the people, for me, I make sure that I don't have just one leash, but I actually probably have three leashes that make sure that I'm attached to the space station. So if I let go accidentally, I'm actually attached in several different ways to the space station. But just in case I'm not, I have a jetpack on my back and it's not enough to be running around the space station, repairing everything, flying in your jetpack, but it's enough for me to fire the jets and get stable and find my, sp my space station and fly back. And I have to practice doing that and I have to take a test where I show them that I can do that over and over and over again, even when I'm worried and kind of scared. And mm -hmm. so we practice doing that to make sure that we can get home safe, um, even if our leashes break. Yeah, We call yeah. our leashes tethers. Yeah. All right, Raza, real quick. What's your question, Raza? Unmute. I wanted to tell you that, um, did you know that um, the sun can fit a hundred Earths inside of it? I think it's more than that, but ask your question. About and my other question. Remember, how do you? How do you start? Steer. How do you steer with no air? 
So you remember the question about the sneeze? Uh -huh. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It works the same way for us to steer our little spaceships. Welcome. Just telling Miss Coleman, Miss Katie, that I bought a Lego of the International Space Station. It has the cutest little space shuttle that came with it. So yeah. our space shuttle had all these little openings we, that were what we call maneuvering jets, and we could fire out a burst of gas. So if I fired my jet that way, so the air, the gas went out that way, my orbiter, my shuttle would go the opposite direction. So again, similar to how you sneeze, you sneeze, you have a little gas that leaves your mouth. It goes one direction, you go the opposite direction. That's the same concept for how we would steer our spaceship. I want to thank you all because we do have another group of older uh, kids that's going to be joining us. So I want to just have us take a few moments here and I want to put up a, a little scene here for you all to see. Your parents can write to us. You can write to us at a, a Gmail account or you could go to readsteam.org and contact us there. If you have questions that you want me to pass along, I'd be happy to do that for you. But right now, what I'd like us all to do is to thank Ms. Coleman and Ms. Lawrence for being here today. And we want to thank your parents for helping you pick great books to read. And we want to tell you how much we want you to keep reading and enjoy. So for now, would you unmute and everybody say thank you, astronauts. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're very fun to spend time with everybody. Oh, Max says bye to Max says bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you.